thing. It's fully blind. I'm 17 years old. Learned the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I could be. With the 13th pick in the 1996 NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. I made that deal with myself at 13 years old. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything, everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. So at 13 years old, I had a, um, <laughs> I had a kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings. It was Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are, what club teams they played for. So when we go on the AAU travel circuit, I, I got to hunt them down. Right? And so that became my mission in high school, is to check off every other person, all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. You know, it's, you got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not, you know, you, you kind of got to get over yourself. Like, it's not about you, man. Like, oh, okay, you feel embarrassed. You're not that important. Like, <laughs> get over yourself. Yeah, that's where you go. Get over yourself. Right, like you're worried about how people may perceive you and like you're walking around and it's embarrassing because you shot five air balls, get over yourself, right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. High school, year before, we played 35 games, max, right? Week in between, spaced out, plenty of time to rest. In the NBA, it's back to back to back to back to back to back to back. I didn't have the legs. So you look at the shot, every shot was online. Every shot was online, but every shot was short, right? I got to get stronger. I got to train differently. The weight training program that I'm doing, I got to tailor it for an 82-game season mm. so that when the playoffs come around, my legs are stronger and that ball gets there. So I look at it with rationale and say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I go, well, next year they'll be there. That was it. Done. Done. So many guys tell stories about your work ethic. Yeah. What was really your work ethic like, and for how long did you stay disciplined? Um, well, I mean, I mean, every day. I mean, since you know, 20 years. I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability. Man, my vertical was a 40. It wasn't a 46 or a 40, mm -hmm. 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive. Right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So like from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game mm. and it just never changed. Technical question here. Let's sure. see how you can answer this. Who would Shaq be if he had your work ethic? He'd be the greatest of all time. If Shaq had your work, he'd be the greatest of all greatest time. Greatest of all time by For sure. He, he'd be the first to tell you that. For sure. I mean, this guy was a, a force like I have never seen. I mean, it was crazy. You know, a guy at that size, generally guys at that size are a little timid and they don't want to be tall. They don't want to be big. Man, this dude was, he did not care. He was mean. He was nasty, he was competitive, he was vindictive. I mean, he was, yeah, I wish he was in the gym. I would have had fucking 12 rings. What is the conversational life like with your wife and kids to say, listen, this is what I'm doing. How did that conversation go? Well, with the kids, it's different. So like the communication with, the, with our children is that you know, Pops is working hard. This is the level of 
attention to detail you need to have in everything you do. So it's, it's setting the example. Same thing with my wife. My wife's a stay-at-home wife. It's the hardest job, man. Right? So she works really hard at that. I mean, it's, you know, and so her attention to detail with that as well are examples for our children. And then for my wife, it's, you know, she's as competitive as I am. So she's like, listen, man, if you're going to be out here training eight hours a day, if you're going to spend nine months out of the year away from your family, you better fucking win the championship. But it's a balancing act. And that's the thing that's important is understanding that we have to have so much energy. Because for like Natalia and Gianna when they were babies, especially Natalia because they're doing prime years. Um, and I go to practice and I'd, I'd train and you know, I'd play the game and you know, I'd come home and I'd be sore and I'd be tired. And she wants to go swimming. She wants me to take her to the park. She wants to just jump on my back or whatever the case may be. You can't say, I'm too tired, I'm going to lay down. Mm. That's not fair. She don't know what the hell's going on, right? And if this was a game, you'd suck it up and play. I play games with the flu. I play games with 102 degree fever, man. Powerful. You can't do that. That is can't. so powerful. Hey, man. You got to be on, man. No is, there, is there a story where it's like, you know, no one knows about where you went and played a game and it was so insane for whatever reasons? No sleep. I, <laughs> you played a game, game with zero no, sleep. Zero sleep. Zero sleep. It's like, you know, um, kids, you know, Natalia had a certain, you know, health situation or what have you and you're staying up all night and then uh, you got to go out and perform because fans don't know, you know teammates don't know, nor do they care, nor should they that you've been up all night, you got to perform, right? And so um, you just got you to go to work, man. So, you, know, you got a lot of people playing their hard-earned money to come watch you perform. 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 It's your job to be in shape. It's your job to be strong enough to perform at that level every single night. And as a competitor, I'm not, I'm not ducking shit. Like, it's not, oh, my God, my back hurts. I'm sore. We got to play Vince Carter and Toronto Raptors tonight. We actually had this happen. We had a game against Toronto in 2000 um, and Vince was tearing the league up um, my back was jacked jacked but like the perception of that like what Kobe's missing the game against Toronto and Vince Carter because you know, my back was really spasming but people would be like what oh he's ducking Vince excuse me <laughs> no I don't think so so I would be in the layup line like okay there's a lot of days where you know you can rest and recover. Today ain't one of them. Your back can bother you any other day. That shit ain't bothering me today. We going he gonna have to see oh, me today. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're playing against the Golden State Warriors. Score is 107-109. You guys are close to getting into the playoffs. You know exactly what happens in the game. You go up. You're about to take your shot, and then all of a sudden, boom. Yeah. Achilles happens, right? He went and hit the free throws, and then you walked off the stage. Yeah. And then you got the surgery done. How the hell do you tolerate that kind of pain? Uh, you know, I, I use this, I, I tell this example, and I think this is the best way to explain it. Um, you know, you have a hamstring injury, you pull your hamstring really, really badly, you can barely walk, right? Let alone play anything soccer, basketball, volleyball, whatever it is. You can't do anything. Doctor tells you go home, sit up on the couch, rest your hammy, right? Stay off of it, don't get up, no sudden movements. You're at home, all of a sudden a, a fire breaks out in the home, right? Your kids are upstairs, you know, wife is wherever she may be, you know, shit's going down, right? I'm willing to bet that you're gonna forget about your hamstring, you're gonna sprint upstairs, you're gonna grab your kids, you know, make sure your wife's good, you're getting out of that house, right? Hamstring be damned. You're not gonna feel your hamstring, right? And, and the reason is because the lives of your family are more important than the injury of your hamstring. And so when the game is more important than the injury itself, you don't feel that damn injury. Mm. Not at that time. If I went in the trainer's room, my kids are in there, and you know they're looking at you and stuff, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, you know, it's all right. Dad's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. As a parent, you gotta set the example. 
You gotta set the example. This, this is another obstacle. This obstacle cannot define me. It's not gonna cripple me. It's not gonna be responsible for me stepping away for the game that I love. I'm gonna step away on my own terms. And that's when the decision was made that, you know what, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. As parents, you gotta lead by example. If you want your kids to do whatever it is they want to accomplish in life, you have to show them. Mm. You can't, you gotta show them. And that's what I tried to do.